Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Feed. My name, of course, is Panso6. You can call me Derek. And this past week was E3 2016. We got all kinds of crazy hardware and video game announcements, but I cannot even start the list here because this video would be at least 10 hours long. But I want to go ahead and talk about the 10 things that I'm most excited about. Of course, there are more things I'd like to talk about, but I don't want to keep you guys here all day. So let's go ahead and get started with the first game that I'm pretty excited about, and that's State of Decay 2. Uh, State of Decay 2, the first one came out uh, a couple of years ago on the Xbox 360, then it finally made it over to PC. And it's this zombie survival uh, management game where you have survivor survivors, uh, there's permadeath, so if you die, you have to start as a new character and go find your other character that has your backpack and hopefully not get bit. And you also have to take care of resources and get people to come into your group and build bases and whatnot. Um, it was actually a really big su surprise when it came out. It did have its shortcomings, mainly some bugs and just a few other things that made it not perfect, but it was actually really, really addictive. And... State of, De of Decay 2 is going to be running on a new engine, as well as going to have uh, drop-in co-op. So, pretty excited to hop into that world again. Uh, there's going to be a new lake location and a few other things. So, hopefully it's a whole lot better than the original, because I think with a little bit more work, the original could have been just excellent, like super, super awesome. So, that's the first game. The second game I'm pretty excited for is God of War. Uh, they didn't title it God of War 4 or anything like that. It's just straight up God of War, and it takes place in Norse mythology, um, and you're facing off against the Viking gods and stuff like that. The game looks really, really different. Um, it seems like it's going to be a, um, <laughs> a game where you're Kratos and you're protecting your son, showing how to hunt and maybe passing down your legacy to him. Um, you see a much beard, more bearded, experienced uh, Kratos. And the game looks a little bit um, like it's going back a little bit. Um, it's got this over-the-shoulder um, camera, very similar to what you see in most third-person shooters. Um, and it doesn't seem like it's super, like, jump up in the air and use your Chaos Blades or whatever and destroy everything. It's, it seems like it's a whole lot more set back. But we only seen the first maybe, like, 10 minutes of the game, and it was actually really, really good. The gra graphics were great. Uh, it made me think it was going to be open world, but apparently it's not open world, uh, according to the developers. But definitely excited for that, um, and I'll most likely be picking that up once it comes out. Uh, I think they said next year, but there's still no release date. Uh, the next game they had was Dead Rising 4. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Dead Rising series, except for the second game, which I didn't care too much about. But I played it, and you know, I I I'm a big big fan of zombies. I, I love all the zombie movies I can get my hands on. Some are better than others, but uh, you know, I play tons of zombie games. Brought up on Resident Evil, and um, <laughs> you name it, I've probably played it or seen the movie. And Dead Rising has always been insanely over the top, and I really enjoy it. It doesn't take itself too serious, even though the story for like it makes it seem like it's serious, but the situations you can be in, like you could wear a banana hammock and carrying a lightsaber and <laughs> have a horse mask on by killing all kinds of zombies, and it seems like they're going to go with the same route. Uh, this time you're Frank West again, and you're going back to Willamette where the original game started at, and you're supposed to be able to go into the mall, and as well as around the surrounding areas. So that's going to be really exciting, uh, because number one, the first game was my favorite, except the whole Otis thing, where it kept on calling you. I hope that bastard's dead. I hope, he, I hope he's dead. So I hope you run into him, you can kill him. Ah, uh, see, Legend of Zelda. Yes, 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 much yes, and it looks amazing. Um, they showed off some demos for it. I believe it's called Breath of the Wind. Uh, I believe that's the title for it. But um, it's open world. Tons of quests you could do. Um, just an insane amount of things you could do in this game. Uh, it's way different than any Zelda that I've seen or played. And I hope this game comes out next year. I finally hope it comes out. If not, you know, if they push it back to give it some more 
uh, time in the oven, I'm fine with that, but I want this game to be perfect. Um, you know, I, I'm going to go back and start playing the other Zelda games. I've not played Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask, which, shame on me. But I have played the originals like Zelda, Zelda 2, um, Link to the Past, uh, Link Between Worlds, uh, Oracle Seasons, Oracle of Ages. I've played those. But I've never really tapped myself into the 3D Zelda games. Oh, yeah, I played Wind Waker, too. So, yeah, that I like. Um, but, yeah, this game looks amazing. It looks, it looks absolutely great. And I think that's a really good direction for the series as a whole. So we'll see what to go, what's going to happen with that. If anything, my fiance is going to be super, super happy because she's a Zelda freak. Um, next game, when we got to see more gameplay of was Battlefield 1, which was announced, you know, a couple months ago. But... Oh my god. That game cannot come out any quicker. It just needs to hurry up and get in my hands. Um I'm I'm huge in the old like World War One, World War Two setting games as well as the history movies. And that's my favorite part of uh history is just reading about World War Two and World War One and just seeing this stuff on screen and been playing a lot of Verdun lately. Um, it makes me just want this a whole lot more. And it's good to get away from these modern and sci-fi shooters and go back to the basics. And I'm kind of, I'm really happy that EA and DICE is like, let's let make this happen because, you know, everybody seems to love this game. Uh, we got to see the gameplay. has lots of destruction, uh, a lot of up-close and personal encounters. Um, the weapons are cool. Um, the tanks, the horses, and all that stuff is crazy. Uh, I just hope EA doesn't fuck this one up because they have a tendency of messing bad things up, especially the fact they announced the French forces will be DLC, which is boo, really, really bad. But I'll probably end up buying the game as well as buying the season pass. This way I can play it because, I, you know, DICE seems to be, they, they tend to keep their keep up to date with the games and support them for a while. So I'm uh, happy with that. Uh, the next big announcement, which was one of the biggest announcements, is E3, and uh, it's got Microsoft being one of the most talked about uh, conferences of the whole week, and that's Xbox Scorpio. Uh, well, if you haven't heard of Xbox Scorpio, it's supposed to be this beefed-up Xbox. Um, it's got more raw power and VR ready. Um, and that's really good. It's really good because their Xbox initiative at this point is... If you have a Windows 10 PC, tablets, um, Xbox One or Xbox One S or the Scorpio, these it's going to be one big family. You can play all the games on all these machines. Uh, of course, PC and the Scorpio will have better uh, optimization and might run better, but you're not going to worry about not have, being able to play a game depending on what system you're on. Um, I think it's great, especially for the PC game community as well as just um, console gamers. It gives a chance for, you know, to experience the games the way you want to and to have more selection. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to break the mold of how console generations work from here on out. Uh, so we probably see every couple of years or so a new updated version. And it would surprise me if Xbox just brands itself as Xbox and no more like Xbox One, Xbox Two, or Xbox S. But I think that they're going to go more of that direction and it'll just be the new Xbox, which I'm pretty excited about. I'll, I'll end up getting it because, of course, I have a pretty nice PC. It does need some upgrades, but I, I'd like to be able to come to my PC and play games on my PC. And if I want to go to the living room, play the games with almost the same type of uh, performance optimization. And the cool thing, too, I can share VR on either my PC and my Xbox. And that's awesome, too, because they also announced the Play Anywhere initiative. And if you buy an Xbox One game, you get the Xbox uh, 10, uh, Windows 10 version for free. So that's really, really cool. Microsoft, that's probably one of the coolest announcements of the whole thing. And... You know, I hope this becomes really successful because, 
yeah, like I said, I will be picking this up. I will also be upgrading the PC, and I will also be getting a Rift or an HTC Vive. Most likely the Rift is what I'll be sticking with, considering the fact that, you know, I can use the Rift here on my PC and then the Rift on the Xbox One, which I'm assuming that's what's going to happen because they already have partnered with Oculus, and seeing John Carmack on stage only solidified that whenever uh, they were started talking about VR and Minecraft. So I'm assuming we'll be able to use our Oculus Rift head VR headsets in the living room. So that's that's really cool. Uh, the next thing they announced is the Bethesda was Prey. Now I've been wanting to play a Prey sequel for a long time. They announced this crazy bounty hunter esque uh, Prey two a few years back, and nothing happened with it. It didn't solidify. Nothing. It just went under the radar. It got canceled, and it was in development hell for a long time. Uh, Prey was one of my favorite shooters last generation. Um, it had some really cool mechanics. It was Portal before there was Portal. Um, and just the things you could do. And it was made by the good guys over the 3D realms. And this time we have, I believe it's Raven or uh, Arcane. It's Arcane. The guys who worked on the original Dishonored are actually working on this one. Um, it's simply called Prey. Uh, I believe it's a reboot of the series. Um, and it looks good. It looks good. There's no gameplay shown. Just a cinematic trailer, but there's a promise with this game will live up to Prey's legacy. So, seeing the pedigree from that studio, I I hope great things come out of it. Ah, uh, see, the next thing on Sony's conference was Death Stranding. Now, this is Hideo Kojima's baby. Um, after he left, after getting kicked out of Konami, uh, PT getting thrown away, and you know. Hearing the thing about Metal Gear Solid Five, some of the stuff that was missing, um, this makes me really happy seeing Death Stranding. Death Stranding is Kojima Productions' new game, and starring Norman Reedus. We don't know anything about this, but um, the the trailer looked really cool. At first, I said, "Did they buy PT? Are they making PT? Like, is this for real?" It wasn't PT, but it was Norman Reedus and the Oil Baby and dead things all over the place. Um, it was interesting, really interesting. But I, I'm a sucker for Kojima. He's one of my favorite game developers of all time. and He's a great storyteller. No matter how far-fetched his stories get, it's always good. It's always really good. All right, so the next thing is Resident Evil 7. Uh, they Actually, this was, this was weird because they announced this at the Sony conference and it was a VR demo that was available. And apparently this has nothing really to do with the game at all. Uh, this is something, basically, they want to show you what the atmosphere is going to be like and what to really expect. Uh, this is also being um, held, well, being helped out by some of the guys that worked on uh, PT, so that's why it seems so familiar. But you can download the demo right now on a PS4. As it has been announced for the Xbox One as well as PS VR and PC, and it's supposed to be completely first person. So that's cool. I hope they go back to form, though. Uh, limited ammo, just scary monsters. I'm, I, I didn't see zombies in this one. It's more like cannibal killers, which was weird. But I, they said it really has nothing to do with the game. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but Resident Evil Seven, is something to look forward to. It's supposed to come out this January. So we'll see what happens with that, and hopefully it becomes successful and paves the way for survival horror all over again. Maybe we'll get to see Dino Crisis come back, um, and Silent Hill return to form. I don't know. Hopefully. Now, my favorite game of the whole show has to be this PS4 title called Days Gone, which is just, I thought when they announced it, once they first showed it, it was The Last of Us 2. But it's this open, I think it's open world um, survival slash story story game where you're a biker um, that's basically trying to survive and do all these random quests and whatnot. There was not much about the gameplay, but they did show the gameplay um, with the biker going to this little camp and it's like a saw yard or something like that. And the zombies are crazy. It looks like something from World War Z. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that movie, but just seeing that on screen, and they come in like, the zombies come in like a flood. Um, they're just everywhere. It doesn't seem like it takes much to kill one, 
but they just come and come and come and come at you. And there's just like they shown you know you you're killing them and it, they're just flooding in. And I'm really excited for it. And again, I like I said, I'm a sucker for zombie games, and this one looks really really good. Uh, it's and I'm sure it's going to be great because most of Sony's first person first party studios do a great job with their games. But yeah, I'm definitely excited for that. There's a whole lot more I could talk about, and there's more things I'm excited about. But maybe I can just talk to you guys in the comment section below. I would like to know what you guys thought. What, what was your favorite games? What what you know what makes you excited this year about E3? But thank you guys for checking us out. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know what you want to see in the future. I'll also be doing some more Let's Plays. If you haven't checked out any of my E3 coverage, you can always go back and check out later, you know, videos from earlier this week. There's a couple Let's Plays as well as a Let's Talk. And I'm going to try to get, uh, hopefully tonight, we we'll may be streaming uh, Dead by Daylight or Ark Survival. And I'll probably, if you miss it, on twitch.tv forward slash Panzer 6. I usually port my uh, streams over here, so be prepared for that. And guys, thank you so much again. Thanks you for all the support so far. Hopefully we can get this channel up and running. We're almost at 150 subs. That might not seem much, but that means a lot to me. That means 150 of you guys, you know, <laughs> want to watch what I do and hear what I have to say. So let's hopefully 150,000, you know, let's do this. Let's do this together. And again, thank you so much. I love you guys, and you have a wonderful evening.